We are living in a time of incredible possibility. At our fingertips lies centuries of global knowledge and skills. Never before have we had access to such depth and breadth of information. Want to learn astrophysics, biochemistry, languages, philosophy, psychology, whatever subject you can think of. You can, th you can go down just about any path you can imagine without having to leave your home. Want to improve your fitness? Dance any style you like? Play a musical instrument? Learn advanced knitting patterns? Whatever skill you can think of. And even if learning in front of a computer doesn't do it for you, you can more than likely find a teacher, school, workshop, or community in the direction of your choice. How long ago was this science fiction? Never before have we had such an exquisite menu of possibility. On the other hand, we're living in a time of immense distraction, information overload, paralyzed by choice, unable to finish one article before or after the next, skimming through page upon page, swimming in second-hand information, unable to tell what is true. Goldfish now tell jokes about human attention spans. <laughs> <laughs> so, how can we navigate this experience in the best possible way? What are the tools we can collect to help us on our journey? My journey into the exploration of learning began with fire dancing and poi spinning. I was always very shy growing up. Didn't like to be center of attention. The idea of being in the spotlight terrified me. <laughs> but when I saw someone performing with fire, I was amazed and thought, that could be a cool thing to do. So I got online, found some instructions, and started to practice on my own in my bedroom. <laughs> As I practiced, I fell in love with opening the possibilities of what I could do. Watching how something that was once impossible and so far beyond me became effortless. <coughs> I became addicted to the satisfaction of learning the next move. And so I began to look into how could I learn things faster, more efficiently, more easily, and get my learning fix. So I began to experiment with different ways I could practice. And I began to notice what seemed to make a difference. I started to look to other fields such as psychology, meditation, yoga, sports science and so on for inspiration. I was always more interested in the tools that I could use rather than just a the theory. What are the choices that I can make in the moment that would help me in my process? What were the tools that I could collect that would help me on my journey. I would like to share some of the tools and techniques and perspectives that I've found to be very useful in my learning process. It's important that these explorations become our own individual journeys. Explore what works for you while remaining open to possibilities and inspiration from all angles. It's important to keep a beginner's mind in all things. When we think we know something, we close down to further exploration in that direction. Why would we need to look any further if we already knew? Thinking we know makes it more difficult to go deeper into, into learning. How much do we know of reality? Almost all of it? Have we almost figured it out? Half of it? Or are we just scratching the surface? <coughs> Can you consider the possibility that perhaps everything we think we know is wrong? Great learners throughout history have always remained open to possibility. <coughs> all I know is that I know nothing. One of the first techniques that I began to use and I found effective was breaking it down. 
In this, we take what we're trying to learn, we break it into its simplest parts, learn each part, and put it all back together again. This is a much easier way to assimilate and digest information or skills. If I wanted to learn how to juggle three balls, the easiest way to go about it is to start with one ball. Practice throwing and catching, searching for the perfect throw. Move on to two balls, practice starting with the right, practice starting with the left, and keep building it up until you add the third ball. Breaking it down, breaking down what we're trying to learn into more manageable pieces gives us a much bigger experience of positive feedback as opposed to the feelings of frustration and failure that we often feel when we aim for the end process. So breaking it down helps us to enjoy the journey. It also gives us a greater understanding of the parts that make up a chosen subject or skill. Another technique that fits together with breaking it down is shifting focus. This is the practice of consciously changing where our attention is when we're trying to learn something or trying to do something. So by shifting focus, we concentrate and we refine one aspect of a time, one aspect at a time, as well as collecting more perspectives of the thing we're trying to learn. The more perspectives we can see something from, the greater an understanding we can have of that thing. It's like if we're looking at an object sitting on a table. From one angle, we've got one perspective. We've got one idea of it. In order to develop a greater understanding, we need to pick that object up. We need to look at it from all its angles. We need to explore it with all of our senses. <laughs> we need to open it and look inside. We need to take it apart. We need to look at each of the parts from every angle. We need to take each of the parts apart. And we need to put it all back together again. So, in the example of poise spinning, shifting focus could involve putting all our attention into our left hand, all our attention into the right poise into the relationship between right and left, into just the top of the pattern. It could be putting our attention into our shoulders, our posture, into the feeling of our feet on the floor. There's an infinite amount of focus points to anything. Another technique that I find very useful when I'm trying to learn something is something I call active focus. This is the practice of being actively involved in what we're trying to do in the moment, as opposed to running on autopilot with our minds a million miles away, similar to concepts such as mindfulness, presence, or being in the now. In order for active focus to be effective, we need to develop the skill of observing the mind. Can you step back and observe your thoughts? Can you observe the part of you that's observing? Can you see the inner dialogue, the stories and judgments being made? Once we can observe the mind, it's important to practice gently bringing ourselves back. So when we notice that our mind has wandered off, we're compassionate with ourselves and gently bring ourselves back to what we are doing. When we beat ourselves up over the state of our minds, we only add more clutter as well as conflict to the situation, taking us even further from what we were trying to do in the first place. Active focus. Notice when your mind is drifted off. Don't make a big deal out of it. Gently bring yourself back. The breath is one of the most powerful tools that we can use. The most powerful tools at our disposal. 
training to use the breath to focus and to relax is one of the most effective ways to aid your learning process. The breath can be used to intensify your focus or to bring yourself back to the moment. Breath control and breathing techniques are used by athletes, martial artists, musicians, yogis, high-level performers of all kinds. Experiment with using your breath as you practice or as you do something. Breathe into the physical sensation of what is happening. And breathe your attention back to the moment and the task at hand. The breath is highly linked to relaxation and also, therefore, to stress. <coughs> Under stress, the flight or fight response tends to kick in, and parts of our brain become more difficult to access, as the system charges to run as fast as it can, or fight with all its strength. Useful when coming across a tiger, not so useful when trying to practice your golf swing or <laughs> anything else that requires fine motor skills, information recall, or information absorption. So it's so important to keep relaxing as we do anything, or as we try to learn something. Relaxation is a skill that needs to be practiced. And like any skill, it can be brought to an infinite level of proficiency. Proficiency. So experiment using your breath to relax the body and mind. Those are a very brief introduction to some of the techniques that I have found to be useful in my learning experiences. And I urge you to try them for yourself. But I arrived at a point where I had such an arsenal of different techniques, but I didn't always have the inspiration, motivation, or energy to use them. There were so many things I wanted to learn, so many directions I wanted to explore, but the difficulties in my life and in my inner process got in the way of these amazing opportunities right in front of me. I began to realize that all the techniques and all the information in the world are useless unless we have the energy and the clarity to use them. So I began to explore and look into what could help me in my process. I noticed that I was beating myself up for not behaving and being the way that I wanted to be. Here I was with all the tools and all the opportunities but paralyzed. And I gave myself a hard time for it. At a certain point, I realized that it wasn't helping, that the inner conflict was sapping even more of my strength, more of my energy, making it more difficult to do the things that I wanted to do and to live the way that I wanted to live. So instead of going head to head with myself and trying to force myself to be another way, I started to experiment and play with the idea of adjusting the foundations of where I acted from. I noticed that if I took care of myself, and if I was able to clear my inner space even a little, I would naturally begin to behave in ways that were more in line with how I wanted to be. How can we optimize the entire system that we operate from? What are the tools and practices we can collect to help create a healthy body and mind? How can we look at all the aspects of our lives and push them piece by piece in more positive directions. But sometimes, when we're so wrapped up in our own difficulties, it can be hard to see a way out. With all the problems surrounding us internally and externally, it can, be, it can all feel so overwhelming. One evening, my father came into the kitchen very agitated. <laughs> Someone had put all of the aprons from the tumble dryer into... No, someone had put all the aprons from the washing machine into the tumble dryer without untangling them first. So the whole thing had turned into this big, tight knot. I told him to leave them with me and I would try to sort it out. At first, I was pulling at this and that and I wasn't sure if it was helping or just making things worse. So I followed one string to its end and just focused on that. At first it was difficult, but when I finally unraveled it, I realized that the whole knot had loosened. And with each string that I freed, the looser the whole became. This became a beautiful analogy for me. Not to get wrapped up and overwhelmed by all the problems and all the difficulties surrounding us, but just to focus on one thing at a time. If we can clear that, everything else becomes more simple. 
It's like when our head is so wrapped up with stuff, so tangled up, we don't have any space to focus. Our mind just keeps getting caught in all of the problems. But if we can free any part of that, we free a bit more space for ourselves to use. Our inner tangle could be that mountain of dishes that keeps staring at us, or that thing on the to-do list that still hasn't been done. Or maybe there's an uncomfortable conversation you need to have with someone. And every time you see that person, think of them, or someone mentions them, our mind gets hooked and gets filled with the problem. But if we can take ourselves and push ourselves through that uncomfortable process of cleaning the mess, having that conversation, or whatever it is, all of which tend to be a much less of a big deal often than the mind makes them out to be. If we can do that, we get this feeling of a weight off our shoulders. We no longer need to think about it anymore. We've freed some of the inner tangle, created more of a spaciousness to operate from. Untangle one part and the whole pattern becomes easier. This is the most incredible time in history. And if we can learn how to navigate it, and if we can teach our children the skills and disciplines of how to navigate it, this can be the most amazing, revolutionary, evolutionary time that humankind has ever experienced, as opposed to the disaster of the, great, of the distraction-filled, dumbed-down ADD pandemic that it could be. We have the tools and knowledge to make this world a complete success for all of humanity right now. We just need to learn how to, how to use those tools, use that knowledge, and how to navigate the obstacles that are preventing this from happening. So stay open and explore what, which tools work for you. Adjust your foundations, optimize your systems, and keep gently picking yourself up. Good luck on your journeys.